Let's create a parametric laser cut finger joint guide in Onshape. Before we begin, we need to understand what parametric design is. Parametric design is to design an object, usually in computer-aided design software, which can change according to certain variables. In our case, it's going to be the width and thickness of the timber that we're going to be using to create our finger joints. Our learning intentions are the application of CAD and CAM in a technology project. Our success criteria will be that I can create a simple 3D part in CAD software, I can implement a simple parametric object, and I can export a drawing in a laser cutter compatible format. Once you've signed into Objects, the first thing you're going to do is hit Create. We're going to create a new document, and our document is going to be called Finger Joint Guide. And it's going to be used as a guide to cut finger joints. In our cases, it's going to be a five finger joint cut. I'm going to press OK, and this will create a new document in Onshape. We're going to start our new document by creating two variables. The variables are going to be the width of our timber and the thickness of our timber. So we're going to create a new variable by clicking on this arrow here and click on variable. The variable name is going to be called first of all width and our value will start off with a nice even 50 millimeters and press tick. I'm also going to create a variable called thickness and that thickness for this one is going to be 12 millimeters and press tick. I now have those two variables sitting over here and I can change those at any time and any time I use these variables that will update in the design. I'll show you what I mean about that when we get to the end. I'm going to create a new sketch and I'm going to create the sketch on the top plane. So you can see here that I'm hovering over the top plane and I'm going to click on that area. That is going to create sketch one on the top plane. I'm going to click on this top button over here so that I can see it from the top. I'm going to choose a corner rectangle and I'm going to click on the top corner up here. I'm going to move my mouse down about there and click on the bottom corner. Let's just move it so that it's closer to this but not on it. How about just there? Like so. I'm then going to press on the line tool and the construction tool. So I'm going to create a construction line. The construction line, I'm going to hover over this top line here until I see that box appear. And underneath it, you can see a little gray box with a line with a dot in it. That means I'm locked to the midpoint. I'm going to click on my mouse button there and it's now locked to the midpoint. And I'm going to lock it to the midpoint down on the bottom. I'm now going to move away and I'm going to press the escape key on my keyboard so that that line is completed. I'm now going to go up to these constraints tools up here and I'm going to press on the midpoint tool. I'm then going to click on this line and this midpoint tool which will lock my rectangle to the middle of the screen. I'm now going to use dimensions the dimension tool here and click on this top line. I'm going to make this top line here as a dimension equal to uh, the width of the timber. And I'm going to click on this width here, so it's hash width. And it's going to be multiplied with the asterisk key and two, so it's going to be twice the width. In this case, when I press enter, it's going to go to 100. If I change this variable over here, which I won't do now, it'll be double whatever I change it to. I'm then going to use the dimension tool again to click on this line here. And this one I will make equal to the width, like so, and press enter. So you can see it's now 100 by 50. I'm going to finish this sketch now by pressing the tick button. 
I'm going to go to one of these little corners here and change the view to a th more 3D view. And then I'm going to extrude this. So press on extrude. Click on the object. And I'm going to change the depth here to be equal to the thickness, which is this thickness here. And press tick. If I now change the thickness variable here, it will update uh, the thickness of the material I have chosen. It's now time to draw the sketches for all of the fingers. So I'm going to draw a sketch and I'm going to click on top of, you can see there my rectangle, my, my rectangular prism has a yellow line around the outside. So I'm going to click on that to select that. And once again, I'm going to view this from the top. I'm going to zoom in on this side just using uh, my scroll button or my scroll wheel on my mouse. And I'm going to draw some squares or rectangles. I'm going to click on this top corner here to lock it to the top corner and just bring it out about that size. I'm going to do the same from the bottom corner. And I'm going to draw one around about here to just above that line so it's not locked to anything. If it turns yellow, it starts locking things and I want to avoid that at the moment. I'm now going to draw a construction line. So line tool and construction tool from the midpoint here, lock, to the midpoint of this line here, like so. I'm now going to press escape to turn that off. And I'm going to use my constraints tool to make this line horizontal, which locks that to the middle. I'm then going to press on my dimension tool and make this line here, the dimension of this line here, equal to the thickness, like so. I'm then going to use my horizontal, sorry, my vertical tool here to lock this to this point here so that they all match and lock this point here to this point here. They're now all going to be 12 thick because they're all locked in a vertical line or a vertical uh, column just there. I'm now going to set some dimensions on this particular one here. And this one is going to be the width divided by, which is that backward slash sign, 5, which in this case, press when I press enter, will be equal to 10. Same with this one. is going to be the width divided by 5. And same with this one. It's going to be the width, click on that, divided by 5. And press Enter. So you now see that I've got those three uh, in line and they are the perfect size for a finger joint for something that's 12 mils thick and 50 mils wide. If I update these two numbers, these sizes of these squares will change accordingly. I now need two more rectangles. So I'm going to click on the rectangle tool. And this time I'm going to start on this line over this side and draw it out like so. And I'm going to start another one around about there and draw it out like so. Now I'm going to use the vertical tool to lock this point here and this point here. And then I'm going to use the dimension tool to make this once again, equal to the thickness, and press Enter. The final thing I need to do is to use the horizontal tool over here to, to lock this one in line with the top one of that, and lock the bottom one in line with the bottom line of that, and so on for these ones, here to here, and this one here to here. I now uh, have those set. They're all ready to go. I can press tick. And let's just go to the 3D view so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to zoom up a little bit. And I'm going to use the extrude button again. I'm going to click on each of these squares in turn, like so. Except for this time, I'm going to press the remove button. And that will remove them. I press tick. And now I have my cutouts for my finger joints. I can then use those to trace out anything on a 50mm wide by 12mm thick 
piece of timber. To get it ready for laser cutting, all I need to now do is to right click on here and export as DXF slash drawing. I'm now going to be calling this my uh, finger joint guide. And I might put in the fact that it is a 12 by 50. I need to change my format to DXF and then I hit export. And that will go to my downloads. I can then send that to the laser cutter for laser cutting. As I said, I'm going to demonstrate why this is parametric design. I can change these two param parameters here. Let's just say I'm working with uh, something that is 140 mils wide. Tick. And you can see that it's updated there. And something that's 19 mils thick. Tick. And you can see that that's updated there. If I zoom out, you can see that it's updated accordingly. So no matter what size I have, I can actually make my finger joint guide fit that size perfectly. All I now need to do is to right click on there and export that and send that one to the laser cutter instead.